Hey, this is Moto Varun. I'm here at the Ducati showroom uh, with the beautiful uh, Street Fighter V2. I'm going to share with you all of the specifications and details of this motorcycle. I uh, hope you find it helpful. All right, so we're looking at the Street Fighter V2 and uh, you can see this is the heart of the motorcycle, the engine, um, and you can tell there's this huge radiator. Um, so the engine is a monocoque styled engine i think it debuted in 2012 in the panigale uh, 1199 um, i'm gonna recheck that but i think that's where it debuted um, so the thing about this motorcycle is it's one of the few performance uh, v2 engine um, and it's uh, 155 bhp and at uh, 955 cc so it's almost a leader class engine uh, so it, it runs beautifully so you can check out my ride review what it feels like it reminds you of what the Ducati engine is all about and it and it reminds you of the fabulous performance a V2 has to offer it's beautiful so here you can see uh, the headlamps uh, let me switch it on for you for a second and then you can see uh, the DRLs. Ooh. <laughs> Beautiful looking DRLs, aren't they? Yeah, it's got such a beastly look. So I've sort of dimmed the lights here so you get a glimpse of the DRLs. Um, and I'm sure you can see the headlights when you hit the pass switch. So hitting the pass switch here and then you can see the headlamps right you see that so it dims the DRLs and then the headlamps take over they are amazing looks really cool let's take a look at the uh, Ducati Street Fighter instrument console so before that I would like to show you the key for the Street Fighter V2 so as you can see here this is the key uh, to the Street Fighter uh, V2. Pretty cool, feels cool. Now, what I would like you to see is this. I love how it, it starts up, right? Now, let's see. So you've got the engine braking control, you've got uh, Ducati traction control, you've got ABS and you've got Ducati wheelie control and then you have the uh, temperature of the engine then you have the temperature of uh, the atmosphere and this is the odo and then you have the uh, gear rpm then the menu and the mode you're riding in time and of course it's crossed 1000 kilometers so it's service is due and yeah there are other indications one is uh, neutral then you have abs then you have high beam low beam then the oil and this is i think the hazard light uh, I mean, sorry, uh, this is the uh, warning light. And then you have reserve sign here. Now the thing is that this does not have a fuel gauge. Sort of very surprising to me how Ducati missed out on that, but uh, all right, not a deal breaker, but it would help if it had a fuel gauge. Uh, for the most part, uh, let's take a look at the menu so if you come here and click long press then you see it enters the modes so there is the sport mode so you can choose uh, the sport mode or you can also toggle in between them and uh, you can choose to set all of these parameters uh, we're not going to do all that right now but yeah then you go to the road mode it's the same thing you can set all the parameters and the engine power and all of that changes accordingly and then you go to the wet mode and it has the lowest power delivery and everything else kicks in to its highest degree as suppose. Uh, so all of these are customizable which is really cool and uh, you exit so you can go to the menu you can go to DRL which is uh, day, day, uh, daylight running lamps so you can set them to auto or manual then you have the backlight again 
So it decides according to the lighting conditions outside, what kind of uh, lighting you will have at the instrument console. Uh, so then you go back, then you have date and time, then you have the service interval, then you have lap, you have tile calibration. Uh, this tile calibration is something that I'm yet to discover. It's a new feature. I'm yet to understand what it does, but I will figure it out. And then you have the turn indicators, uh, so the auto or manual. So most of these things, I just leave them as is. I think it's only in the modes that I will be uh, customizing and sort of taking full advantage of what it does. So that is the instrument console for you. All right, let's take a look at the uh, consoles here. So you have the engine kill switch, you have the hazard light. It's pretty much similar to the Scrambler actually. I would have preferred the more premium uh, multi strata sort of feel, but okay, so you have the master cylinder, then you have the uh, clutch so cylinder. And yeah, and then you have the uh, indicator mode, horn, uh, the high beam, low beam, and this is to toggle within the menu, right? So the consoles are good, it does what it has to. Then you have the rear view uh, mirrors, which are similar to what you find in the V2, V4, light and functional, all right? Now, up in front, you have a 43 mm upside down Showa suspension, and at the rear, you have a mono shock, as you can see here. I love how it's designed and placed in the motorcycle, catering to the way this motorcycles behave and is meant to be ridden. Both the rear and the front are fully adjustable. So if you understand the science behind how to set up your suspension, or if you have um, an expert to do it, this suspension can be adjusted to your requirements. So how it handles everyday bumps, very good you can see a lot of undulations on this road and my voice is fine so potholes actually has it beautifully i was thinking that it would be extremely stiff and difficult but handles it so much uh, grace actually you can take a look at the brembo levers the brake lever and then you have brembo clutch lever as well so these are long levers we would assume that short levers are far more exciting to have uh, considering the kind of motorcycle this is. Uh, I would prefer the short levers, but yeah, it does the job. It feels great, but third party levers are a must if you have this motorcycle. So coming to the braking, uh, it comes with a Brembo 4.32 monoblock calipers and they are mounted onto twin 320mm uh, discs. The bike that this bike has to offer uh, uh, for all it does as a performance motorcycle is fabulous. Obviously you can take a look at that in my ride video, first ride video. Woo, so great time for you to understand the braking. And at the rear, is a single disc as you can see here it is a 245 mm disc uh, two piston 245 mm disc that is also extremely well behaving and does what it's it should for the kind of motorcycle this is and here you see the single sided swing arm uh, so if i move to the other side you can see that there is no swing arm here but only on one side a few motorcycles have chosen to use the single size swing arm for the advantages it has um, over the double sided swing arm. Of course, this also means that it's far more complex uh, and is much more expensive than a double sided swing arm. Uh, but of course, it looks great, but it also adds to the performance of the motorcycle and it is not just aesthetics. Uh, so that I love about this motorcycle as well. And yeah, so this is the other side of the engine. As you can see, packed well, looks looks great. All of the plumbing and everything is hidden nicely behind um, the, the shell. So if you look here, the motorcycle sits pretty low to the ground. So that's about 
you know, uh, a palm, right? So my palm, is so from the ground to, you know, it's not even my palm actually, it's, it's that much. So you can see how it is, right? So it ends somewhere here and uh, that's pretty low for Indian uh, potholes and speed breakers. But uh, for the most part, if you're going to be using this motorcycle for um, weekend rides, I think it should be all right. But if you live in and around areas or your route has a lot of potholes, bad roads, you might have to think it over. All right, so helping you grip the roads uh, for the main machine, this is uh, they've given you the Pirelli Rosso Force. So this is 120 by 70 up in front and moving to the rear obviously is much thicker is again a Rosso 4 and as you can see it is 180 by 60 and uh, 17 inch rim and you can see here the Rosso 4 um, embedded into the tire right now also of course both front and back are 17 inches which is uh, obviously um, the choice of rim size for most street performance oriented motorcycles right taking a quick look at uh, the contour of the um, tank so you can see the fuel tank you can see that um, it has this nice curve here and here all of these are to cater to the rider to fit in and sort of hug the motorcycle as you ride faster and as I move towards the back you have a nice grippy seat the material is premium beautiful and the width of the seat is really good and uh, it has a very nice um, comfort I was on this for almost an hour and it felt great and the pillion uh, I don't think this motorcycle is meant for pillions but if at all on an odd chance you want to take a pillion then sure they can still manage short distances right and then uh, we move for the back the you have the tail lamp right and then you have these holes here i think that's for some form of aerodynamics and also makes the bike lighter uh, and then you have the tail tidy i think this tail tidy is fantastic it's tidy enough don't need to tidy it for the and uh, last but not the least i wanted to speak about the heating of this motorcycle of course it does run a bit hot but not as hot as a v4 obviously because of two less cylinders but you can see here below the seat is the exhaust pipe for the most part this morning uh, when i went on a ride which, which lasted for about an hour i didn't really feel any unbearable heat under under my but but on my left lower thigh i did feel a little bit but it was nothing unbearable i think with uh, proper riding gear it would be just fine don't dream of riding this motorcycle wearing shorts uh, but yeah i wanted to just uh, show you how it feels to hop onto the motorcycle and you can see the height i'm 510 and the seat is about 845 mm so you can get an idea of how it, how it feels so, so hop on the stand is reachable no issues there uh, my my boots have about one and a half inch uh, i stand at about 510 5 feet 10 inches it's pretty comfortable no issues here at all i think it's pretty manageable for anybody who's also at five 5'6 to 5'10 should still be alright um, and uh, yeah so I hope this gives you a good idea of how it is. So coming to the rear of the motorcycle you have the exhaust so you can see that it also rides pretty low so you got to be careful but it sounds fantastic even being stock. Uh, I'll give you a, a sample of the sound uh, in just a second.
There you go. What a mean sounding motorcycle. And that is stock. I don't think there is a need for you to change it to anything else for the most part. But yeah. So here is Street Fighter V2. And I hope you enjoyed this video.